Greetings, YouTubers. I'm Rick, the tech enthusiast here with the next LGU lesson number 22, LCD display. In this lesson, we'll check out the 1602A liquid crystal display that is provided with the LGU kit and basically build the tutorial's example circuit to demonstrate the functionality. Then we'll add the I2C or I2C module to simplify the wiring. So let's start building. The 1602A LCD display that is included in the kit has 16 columns by two rows with an LED backlight. The 1602A module has 16 pins, which are pin one, VSS, which is connected to ground, pin two, VDD, which is connected to the plus five volts, pin three, V0, this pin is used to adjust the LCD contrast. The data sheet claims that we can use a range between 0 and 5 volts, but 0 typically doesn't show anything. Pin 4 RS, or the register select pin, which controls whether you're writing to a data register or an instruction command register. Having it high writes to the data register, taking it low is an instruction or command. Pin 5 the RW pin, selects if the LCD is in read or write mode. Having it high is in read mode, taking it low is in write mode. Now this is why we typically ground this pin to keep it in write mode. Pin 6E is the enable clock enable pin. This is handled by the library. Typically, the falling edge trigger causes the LCD to execute an instruction or command. Pin 7 through 14 are the data bits D0 through D7. Data bits D4, D5, D6, and D7 are required for at least four bit communication. Pin 15, which is labeled as A on our LCD display, is the anode or the plus LED backlight connection. You would then connect this either directly or uh, through a 220 ohm resistor to your plus five volts. Pin 16 is labeled as K or as the cathode or the negative connection to the LED backlight. And we'll just connect that to ground. The liquid crystal library, which we'll go over more later, has a neat create char method. Since each character in the display is made up of eight rows of five dots across, create char allows defining up to eight custom characters if you require this for your projects. The data sheet and the tutorial have additional information on the LCD display, and I encourage you to check them out. For this lesson, we'll need the following items from your kit. The Elego Uno R3 board, the 1602A LCD module, a 10K potentiometer, 16 male to male jumper wires. I'm going to add a 220 ohm resistor and the breadboard. On page 153, you'll see the following schematic. If you notice that the data pins are connected to Arduino Uno pins D9 through D12. However, I like this schematic that's provided on the Arduino's website. And then here's my version. Notice that the data pins are connected to D2 through D5, and RS and E are connected to D12 and D13. Plus 5 volts is connected to one side of the 10K potentiometer and the ground to the other. The wiper or middle pin is connected to V0. Power is also connected to VDD and pin A through a 220 ohm resistor. Finally, ground is connected to VSS and K. On page 154, you'll see the wiring diagram. And here's my version. Here you can see the placement of the 10K potentiometer and the 220 ohm resistor. There's also a photo on page 156. And here's my photo. The little orange jumpers in the middle of the breadboard are used to keep things neat and tidy. What may be hard to see is the little white jumper from the RS pin going left 
and leading up to the orange jumper. This was used to avoid the potentiometer. Okay, let's jump to the code. As before, we'll load the recommended sketch provided in the tutorial. Go to the file menu item, select open, and browse to where you save the Elgu files. Then under your language, code, under lesson 22 LCD display, under hello world, and open the hello world.ino file. Looking at the code, you'll see a nice comment section describing the sketch. Then it starts by including the liquid crystal library. To verify that we have the liquid crystal library, we select the sketch menu item. Then select include library and scroll down to see if we have the liquid crystal library installed. Since I've used a liquid crystal display in some of my previous lessons, it's already installed. If you didn't have it installed, select Manage Libraries. A Manage Libraries window will appear. In the upper right hand corner is a search bar. Type in Liquid Crystal and hit Enter. The manager will search a list of available libraries and one of them is a Liquid Crystal Library. Select it and an option to install the latest version will appear. Click the install button. Once you have it installed, you may need to restart your Arduino IDE. Okay, let's stop here. As it turns out, this is very similar to the example Liquid Crystal sketch already installed on the Arduino IDE. So let's go to the file menu item select examples, then liquid crystal, and finally select the hello world example sketch. Looking at the code, you can see that the comment section is very similar to before. There's the include liquid crystal library and the next line defines the constant values for all the pins. And this time it uses the Arduino pins five through two for the data pins, four through seven. E or EN is set to pin 11 and RS is set to pin 12. The void setup begins the LCD object with the number of columns and rows as parameters. Then it uses the liquid crystal print method to display hello world. It will automatically print this on the first row. The void loop starts by using the set cursor method to move the cursor to column zero and row one. Okay, I should point out that the columns and rows get numbered starting from zero, just like the arrays did. So we have a column value of zero through 15 and row values of zero and one. I know this may sound confusing, but row one is the second row. It then uses the millis command, dividing it by a thousand and printing it to the LCD display to indicate how much time has passed. Then it just loops. Remarkably simple. Let's upload the code and try it out. So as you can see, the hello world is on the first line here. And on the second line is the seconds as it's incremented. Uh, what we have here is the uh, potentiometer, which we can adjust the contrast. And here I'll adjust that. Let's see if we too much and then and it disappears. Like, uh, just enough to make it viewable. Yeah, there we go. All right, really, that's, that's all there is to it. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised it took until lesson 22 to present the 1602 LCD module. 
the LCD module can really add a lot of value to just about any sketch. However, as you may have already guessed, using a minimum of six data pins for just the display may not always work. Luckily, there is an I2C adapter module that could be used with the 1602A that just uses two pins, the SCL and the SDA pins, along with power and ground for serial communication. The module includes a potentiometer to adjust the contrast and a jumper to enable or disable the LED backlight. You can easily find the adapter on Amazon or eBay. I'll add the link in the show notes below. So let's add the I2C module to this circuit and see how it changes things. The schematic is simple. Unlike my amateur fritzing symbol, the pins line up directly. The SCL and the SDA jumpers go to the SCL and SDA locations on the Arduino Uno. Then they're just power and ground. Looking at the wiring diagram, it shows a bunch of jumpers from the I2C module to the LCD. This was just for clarity and for fritzing. My module already has breadboard pins soldered on, so they'll both be mounted to the breadboard. Some versions come without pins, and those can be soldered onto the back of the 1602A LCD module if you want to permanently convert the module to I2C. For the side pins, we'll use female to male jumpers to connect the I2C module to the Arduino. Let's check out the revised sketch. But first, before I modified the sketch, I ran this I2C check sketch I found on the web. When I purchased my I2C adapter, it showed the default address as hexadecimal 20. Now while testing the code, nothing seemed to work. Running the sketch, I discovered my module's default I2C address was hexadecimal 3F. Yeah, nothing close. Uh, I'll include this sketch with the tutorial files too. This time we'll modify the previous sketch to work with the I2C module. But before we do that, we need to install the Liquid Crystal I2C library. Normally, I would recommend installing the library from the Manage Libraries window from the Arduino IDE. But as of this video, the library provided by the link is no longer the latest version, but rather an older forked version. The version I'm going to recommend is from Frank D. Brabander. And I apologize if I mispronounced that last name. Unfortunately, he hasn't been versioning his library, but it was last updated March 2017. I'll provide a link in the show notes below, as well as provide a zipped version of the library within the tutorial files. So now go to the sketch menu item. Then select include library. Select add zip library. If you've already downloaded my tutorial files, go to where you save those files. In my case, I'll go to where I have uh, my workstation here. Then select the FDE bra bander hyphen liquid crystal hyphen I squared C dot zip file. Select it and then hit click open. Now I have already installed it, but when I in installed it, the Arduino IDE automatically installed it for us and it, I didn't need to restart my Arduino IDE. So depending on your Arduino version, you may or may not need to restart it. Okay, there's already examples of this sketch for the Liquid Crystal I2C, but let's continue updating our sketch to really see the differences. Let's scroll down in our sketch until we see the Liquid Crystal.h. Let's change the Liquid Crystal.h to liquor crystal underscore I2C. Oops, I2C dot H. This would be the new library that we're going to use. Okay, let's comment the next two lines of code and then add the next line of liquid crystal. And it helps if I spell it right. Gosh, we're calling. <laughs> uh, and this one's going to be 
I2C. And then we're going to type in LCD. And then we're going to put the the I squared C address for your specific adapter. Now mine happens to be uh, hexadecimal 3F. You'd want to put whatever version you, or whatever address your adapter might be. In. Then you want to add the number of columns and then the number of rows. You want to go down to the void setup under the lcd.begin statement. We'll go ahead and delete the 16 two uh, values from the begin statement and then we'll add an, an additional statement lcd backlight and that should turn on the backlight for our lcd and then we have the lcd print world which should work the same the rest of this should remain the same and there will be no changes. That's it, that's all there is to it. We've just changed our code to the I squared C module. Pretty simple. Let's upload this code and check it out. As you can see, it, it uploaded just fine. We still have the hello world on the first row and now the seconds are incrementing on the second row. You can see that uh, we just have the wire connections to the SCL and the SDA. And now if you didn't have these two particular pins, you could use the, I believe the two analog pins over here to accommodate the same function. And then they're just power and ground. We just need to adjust, if, if you need to, you can adjust the uh, contrast potentiometer right here. And if we remove this little jumper right here, the backlight completely turns off. I suppose you could add a resistor from that jumper with a uh, female and male jumpers there, but uh, for now this, this would work pretty well. Yes, that worked really simply. And you see it's only two connections two data connections, right, in this case it's actually, actually the uh, analog connections. Um, it's a great solution if you're limited by data pins. And before we finish this lesson, I should point out there are several other displays worth considering. For instance, some of these OLED type displays. They typically come with I squared C or SPI connections and a variety of sizes. While these two come in white or blue graphics, you can find some that have a yellow band at the top and white or blue at the bottom. And these displays I got recently are color displays, so I can't wait to try them out. If you're planning on purchasing an additional display, any of these OLEDs are a great option. Of course, always verify that the display's voltage requirements meets your specific microprocessor board. For instance, the Elego Uno R3 board works fine with 5 volt displays. Even though the board can support 3.3 volts, the logic level voltage produced by the data pins are 5 volts. So be careful when choosing a display. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little about the 1602A liquid crystal display module and the I squared C adapter. If you like this sketch, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. I'll have additional links for other interesting videos and code for this project in the show notes below. Join me next time for lesson 23, Thermometer. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks and see you next time.